again and welcome to A Beginner's Guide to Carmen. So Carmen is probably the most well-known opera in the entirety of operatic repertoire. It was composed by Georges Bizet and it is performed in French, which seems to take a lot of people by surprise. There are two important things you need to know about the style in which Carmen was composed. It falls within the romantic period of music composition, which means there's an emphasis on long fluid lines and beautiful soaring melodies, but it is also classified as an opera comique. This does not mean that it's necessarily a comic opera. What it means is that it follows the conventions of what had been comic operas up to that point. This means that arias are separated by dialogue. It is supposed to mean that the arias are separated by spoken dialogue, but that's not the case with any production of Carmen that I have ever seen, so I'm not entirely sure that's correct. But the Encyclopedia Britannica does, so I'm not going to argue with Encyclopedia Britannica. In many of the pieces, since it takes place in Spain, Bizet tries to approximate the sounds of traditional Spanish music and flamenco music. So what is Carmen actually about? It's about Don José, who is a soldier serving in Seville. He's a small town boy and engaged to the pious Micaela. Everything in his life seems to be perfectly ordinary until he meets Carmen, who is an independent gypsy woman. Her free spirit is exotic and intoxicating to him, and he is drawn to her more and more. But can Don José really fit into Carmen's world? The more conflict between these two worlds and jealousy begins to creep in, their story can only end in tragedy. So Carmen is based on a novella by Prosper Merimé, from which Bizet composed his opera. Gypsies did work in the cigarette factory in Seville, which is now, I believe, one of the University of Seville's main buildings downtown. And the reason they worked there rolling the cigarettes is because they were considered the lowest of the low, not even true Spaniards. So the, the only jobs that they could get were jobs that the true Spanish wouldn't deign to do themselves. There was and still is a very strong Romani community in Seville, but they were and are still on the fringes of that society and were oppressed for a long time because, as I said, they weren't strictly Catholic since they had no permanent address, they were considered untrustworthy. And they weren't truly Spanish, since they had different genetic roots way back many generations. However, both Gypsy and Arab music made Spanish music, what we think of as traditional flamenco music, what it is today. I would also highly recommend that you read the book I Met Lucky People by Jan Matras which I will link down below, in which he explores real gypsy communities and lives among them. And it was from that book that I discovered that Romani aren't as freewheeling and exotic as much of our literature would have them be. They have strict moral codes about women's purity in particular. So this particular portrayal of Carmen isn't exactly true but I would argue that it does make for a good proto-feminist heroine. So as I said, cigarette rolling and smuggling and other illegal work were some of the few ways open to the Romani community to make money. Since Carmen is the most performed opera and the most well-known, there are many, many important moments that the audience will just be waiting for when you go to see it. Here are a couple that you definitely need to know about beforehand. 
the first thing you hear after the overture is the fate theme. You hear it right off the bat in the beginning. Sometimes it's accompanied by a ballet. Sometimes it's just the orchestra on their own. It will depend from production to production. But this is the theme that signifies fate. Fate is a major accelerator of the plot. And so this theme comes back again and again in a variety of different ways. In the opening, it's very slow, it's very ominous, but it's almost kind of sexy in a way as well, which perfectly sums up Don Jose and Carmen's experience and their relationship at the beginning of the opera. You know that it can't end well. These two are not meant for each other, but they can't resist being drawn to each other all the same. You hear it again when Carmen enters the scene later on in Act One, but you would almost never guess that it's the same fate theme. It sounds completely different. It's a furious, hectic, whirlwind pace, which almost signifies her influence in anyone's life. She will come in and turn your life upside down like a whirlwind, which she certainly does to Don Jose. And you hear it again in Act 3 in the card reading scene as Carmen reads her own tarot cards to see what the future holds. And it's not good. Then you hear the fate theme again, but it's slow, it's ominous, it's almost funereal, which goes along perfectly with what the cards have just told Carmen. Speaking of Carmen's entrance, we can't go any further without mentioning her opening aria, Habanera. Linked down below is a production from the Metropolitan Opera in 2009 with Elina Garancha, who is my favorite Carmen of all time. As soon as you start hearing it, I'm sure you'll recognize it. That syncopated rhythm and that bass melody is iconic. And that syncopated rhythm underneath does two things. Number one, it's very sexy. It's like a swinging of the hips, but because it's syncopated, it's not on a predictable beat and it almost throws you as the listener off balance, which is exactly where Carmen wants you because she never does what you would expect her to do. Then we come in touch with the iconic melody that sliding, chromatic, descending scale, which is almost snake-like. You're slithering down a scale, step by step, key by key on the piano. And again, that's very sexy. You can't help but shimmy to that. And you think you know where it's going now. You think, okay, this is the introduction to the exotic Carmen. Okay, I've got her pegged now. But then, when she gets to the chorus about, if you love me, I don't love you. And if you don't love me, I love you. And if I love you, you better watch out. That shifts into a major key, which is completely different to the minor key we were just in. And again, it puts you off balance, just proving again that Carmen never does what you would expect her to do. You're always on the wrong foot. The next major musical moment that I'd like to talk about is the Toreador song sung by the Matador Escamillo. And I have included a video here that you can listen to of Teddy Tahu Rhodes singing it in that same Metropolitan Opera production. There are no lyrics on this video, so I have also included a link to the libretto so you can read along while you watch and listen. This again is an introduction aria. It's the first time that any of us are meeting Escamillo. He is a celebrated bullfighter in Seville, and so we want to see, including Carmen, what he's made of. And what an entrance. He makes as grand an entrance in this bar as he does in the bullring. His aria also begins in a minor key, like Habanera did, but it's more subtle than Carmen's. There are no chromatics, but it still makes it slightly sexy. There are far more powerful dynamics and they remain powerful for much longer stretches of time, which helps the singer really show off the machismo of a matador. Here again, we have that contrast, just like in Carmen's aria, of a verse 
in the minor key, but then the refrain of Toreador on God is in a major key. This can still put you off balance, but it also reflects the stages of a bullfight. There's the terror and the drama of when you don't know who's going to get hurt. Will it be the bull? Will it be the matador? What's going to happen? And then flipping into the major key of, ha ha, victory for the matador. Of course, there are whole bunches of animal rights issues involved in bullfights, but let's not touch those right now. This aria, however powerful the dynamics should be to show off Escamillo's machismo, there should still be dynamic contrast to pull the audience in, to lure them in, to make them feel all of those conflicting emotions as though they were at a bullfight. And this is important not only to pull in the opera house audience, but for Escamillo to pull in his audience of everyone in Lila's Pastia's bar. And I think in this production, Teddy Tahu Rhodes does exactly that. He strikes exactly the right balance. The next major, major moment that any audience will be waiting for in Carmen is the flower song sung by Don Jose, the tenor. This aria is the mark of arrival for any tenor. This is their big, big moment to show that they have made it in the opera world. On the outset, it's a beautiful, lyrical, romantic aria telling Carmen how much that flower that she threw to him has meant to him and how it has kept his love burning for her through months in prison. However, when you start looking at their relationship and really reading into those lyrics, it can also take on a very creepy and possessive tone because as wonderful an opera as this is, it is not meant to be a great love story. Don Jose and Carmen's relationship is not a healthy one. After all, he met her once. He met her once for half a day, went to jail for her, and has been harboring this obsession for her ever since. That's not a great basis for a relationship, let's face it. And it ends with this incredible high B flat that's very, very difficult to reach which is not original to Bizet's score. It is not come scritto, as we say in opera, but it has become tradition, so it will probably appear in whichever production you see. Although if it doesn't, see if you notice any other changes as well. They may be performing a come scritto edition, which is always interesting. And perhaps this contrast of on the one hand being beautiful and poetic but on the other hand, having a very unhealthy undertone, perhaps this is why when he finishes this beautiful aria that Carmen says to him, no, tu me n'aimes pas, you don't love me. Of course, there are many, many more wonderful moments in Carmen that are utterly fantastic and very recognizable. But I discovered as I was writing these notes that they would involve many, many spoilers. So I don't dare include them here. You should go check out a version for yourself. My particular favorite production is the Metropolitan Opera's production in 2010, starring Elina Garancha, Roberto Alagna, and Teddy Tahu Rhodes, among others. But there have been many, many more fantastic productions. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. Please leave me a comment letting me know what you think of Carmen. What do you think of these pieces? Are you interested in seeing Carmen? Have I convinced you that it's one of the best operas I've ever seen? Let me know in the comments down below. And until then, be safe, be well, and happy listening. Bye, everyone.